Ladies and gentlemen, an awesome game that I've got for you today from the 1959 candidates between Mikhail Tegmanik Tal and Bobby Sweet 16 Fisher. Keeping in mind, Bobby was only around the age of 16 uh, during this time. Anyway, Tal opens with d4, Bobby with knight f6, get c4, g6, and knight to c3 from Tal. Bishop to g7 from Bobby, and we have the King's Indian on the board. Next we got e4 and d6. Bishop to e2, so just continuing with the development, Bobby castles. Knight f3 from Tal, preparing to castle. And Bobby strikes in the center with e5. d5 from Tal, closing the position up. Here the engine wanted him to castle as the d-pawn is well defended by the knight and the queen and is usually recaptured uh, with a knight to have a sort of a maroxy bind set up. Anyway, knight b to d7, engine wanted a5 for some reason, don't ask me why. I can only guess to discourage b4. Tal develops his bishop to g5. Now Bobby asks the bishop what it wants to do with h6. Bishop to h4, maintaining the pin against the queen we get a6 and the other engine wanted g5 to get rid of the bishop to put it on a awkward square we get castles and queen to e8 getting out of the pin the knights are connected so it's no problem we get knight to d2 possibly preparing to push the f pawn at some stage bobby moves his knight to free up the f6 square d4 from bobby and the general principle is to attack in the direction of your pawn structure so in this case to the queen side for white bishop f6 bobby trying to trade off tal's most active piece note his pawns are on dark squares so the bishop wasn't too useful at the moment we get takes and takes and i'm not sure why not take with the other knight to improve it i guess defending the c5 square was important we get knight to b3 Again, I only assume it's to assist with pushing c5 at some point. Queen to e7 seems to be adding an attacker to the square and to discourage c5. While you hit the subscribe button, also please let me know in the comments if I'm losing the plot or if you agree. Now we get queen to d2, hitting the h6 pawn. King to h7, defending the pawn. You may ask why not play king to g7, but you'll see in a moment. Queen to e3 to support the c5 square so we've got three attackers and three defenders bobby plays knight to g8 to free up the f6 square again and finally we get c5 from tal after a lot of preparation almost like eating a well-prepared steak or you know fruit salad you know whatever you're into then we get f5 from bobby we get takes and takes and now it makes more sense why king g7 was not played uh, to defend the pawn but rather h7 uh, the king is more safer after g takes f tal plays f4 hitting the pawn we get takes and takes and takes and bishop to d3 on the same diagonal as the king bobby takes again and now up two points of material and hitting the knight tal brings his rook to the party with rook a to e1 hitting the queen Queen to f6 from Bobby, uh, the engine says it was a mistake and queen to d6 was better to propose a queen trade. We get rook to e6 hitting the queen while the knight is still hanging. And ladies and gentlemen, now we get a blunder from Bobby. Was thinking this is a free knight, but uh, as the famous saying goes, there's no such thing as a free knight, uh, especially against Tal because of bishop takes on f5 check and now the king has two moves and there's one rook move so the two king moves are king to h8 but this is mate in three so that's not the way to go the other king move is king to g7 but this also ends up you know in a lot of trouble and now you're losing your queen so the king moves are bad so going back so the best move from Bobby was taking the bishop on f5. Tal takes back with check. King runs to the corner. Rukla from Tal also hitting the queen. Queen to b2 staying on the long diagonal. Rook to e8 best move from Tal pinning the knight. And knight f6 with a discovery on the queen. We get takes and takes and takes. 
and the king comes out of the corner and unpinning the knight and hitting the rook at the same time. Now Tao piles up on the 8th rank and Bobby's in some trouble here. We get knight to e7 defending the bishop. White can't take with the rook because he'll lose his other rook. Knight to a5 hitting the pawn but also going for a more centralized play. h5, h4 and we get a rook to b8. Bobby's kind of paralyzed. If he moves his bishop then the rook falls and if he moves his knight the bishop falls. So Tal brings his knight to the center, b5 from Bobby hitting the knight with his pawn majority on the queen side. But Tal finds the best move and it's plus 17.2 for white. And ladies and gentlemen, Bobby resigned in this position as he was just lost. If you're wondering, the game could have continued as follows without much commentary. Yeah, so this is absolutely just lost for Bobby. Total cleaning things up. Just go a bit fast. That's my 10. 10. Pawn running up the board. Made in 4. 3. And mate, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you enjoyed this one.